Once upon a time, there was a typical American girl who happened to bump into a typical red-blooded American boy. And she bumped into him and bumped into him. <laughs> so they decided they'd better sit down and talk this over before they had an accident. They became good friends. They found they had a lot of interests in common. Radio. <laughs> television. <laughs> trains. <laughs> and when the boy found the girl attractive, desirable, irresistible, he did what any red-blooded American boy would do. He asked her to marry him. They had a typical wedding went on a typical honeymoon in a typical bridal suite. Except, it so happens that this girl is a witch. Here you see the average, normal, suburban housewife in one of her daily routine tasks, preparing breakfast for her husband. <laughs> With a modern kitchen and all conveniences at her disposal, the capable housewife moves efficiently through her tasks. <laughs> Sometimes there are problems. Especially if your husband expects breakfast ready before he goes to work. But that's no problem for the average normal suburban housewife. If she happens to be a witch. Hi, honey. But doesn't that look good? <laughs> Did I startle you, darling? <laughs> Try a touch of bay leaf from India. Have you ever thought of calling before you drop in like other people? I'm not like other people, Samantha, neither are you. So will you please kindly tell me why you're wearing yourself out? Because Mr. McMahon and Mr. Tate thought it would be nice to have Mr. Barker here for dinner tonight. Well, why don't they have him to dinner? Because he's Darren's account. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am very busy. There's an easier way to do that, you know. I promised I wouldn't. Oh, please, you're breaking my heart. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I have to go and change. Oh, well, go right ahead. And I'd rather you didn't show up at the party tonight, if you don't mind. Why should I? I'm only your mother. I won't be around forever. <laughs> Want a bet? <laughs> Among the more soul-satisfying suburban activities is that collaboration with nature that brings fragrance and beauty to the home, horticulture. Husbands are appreciative of their wives' efforts as they leave for their offices, secure in the knowledge that their mates are at home digging rather than in town shopping. In time, patience, fortitude, and loving care are rewarded by fragrant blooms, sturdy and bursting with color. Providing, of course, you have the proper soil and a green thumb. Or, unless you happen to be a witch.
Or should I be more specific and say, uh, a good four o'clock in the morning? What are you doing up so early? I'm not up early. I'm up late, one party after another. I haven't been to bed yet. And neither have you, apparently. Uh, typical, typical, typical. Of what? Of the neglected housewife? Drinking coffee? Eaten alive by suspicion? The husband out to the wee small hours of the morning doing whatever it is he's doing. <laughs> Darren's working in the study. You're joking. No. He's been working till the wee small hours every night this week. Oh, well, lust is lust, I suppose. Whether it's for women or money, it's all the same. It has nothing to do with lust. He's creating a new campaign for Caldwell Soup. Ambition. Thoroughly immoral and foolishly mortal. Darren's a very dedicated man. So was Caesar, and all I got him is a torn toga. <laughs> he was such a nice man, too. <laughs> well, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to take Darren some coffee. Very well. And you can tell what's his name, that any man with a wife like you, who spends every night with a can of soup, must be even less than human. <laughs> <laughs> I give you my personal guarantee, madam, that finer merchandise does not exist. These are absolutely the finest bristles made. No, thank you. I already have a broom. Believe me, lady, you can always use an extra one. No, thank you. Toothbrushes. Polish up your smile. You never know when people are going to drop in. No, really. The barbecue. Extra stiff bristles for the barbecue. I told you I already have all the brooms and brushes I can use. That's impossible, lady. No housewife ever has enough brooms and brushes. All right, see for yourself. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> my, those cookies smell scrumptious, Samantha. Oh, thank you, Bertha. <laughs> you must give me the recipe. Bertha won the pie baking contest at the fair this year, didn't you, Bertha? Well, it was my turn. Now, who would like milk with their tea? You've done enough, dear. You come right over here and sit down. We'll take care of it ourselves. <laughs> Zolder, Pranken, Kopeck, Lump. <laughs> Zolder, Pranken, Kopeck, Lump. I'm trying to give it up. trip? Mm-hmm. Leave tonight. Be in London tomorrow morning, Paris tomorrow night. I'm afraid it's one of the disadvantages of having a top designer for a client. Mm-hmm. I'd like to get out of it, but uh, I figure it's good business to at least go over and look at his spring collection. Yeah, it's tough having to go to dull places like London and Paris. <laughs> look, this is no pleasure trip, especially this year. My wife insists on coming with me. <laughs> look, if you're that much against the trip, why don't you send me instead? Darren, you're my best friend. I wouldn't send my worst enemy on a trip with Louise. <laughs> so I know you won't mind. I had a feeling you were leading up to something. I do have a few loose ends that need uh, looking after, and I wondered if you could take care of them while I'm gone. If you're going to be slaving away in Paris, it's the least I could do. <laughs> now, Susan. Well, au revoir, and uh, tour jeté, I think. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> I thought all it needed was the antenna. Oh, no. No, lady, that was just part of it. Your oscillator variation control is out. Your audio analyzer is burned, <laughs> and that uh, TV filter, well, that's all shredded. It's gonna be a job, big job. Can I use your phone? Yes, of course, it's in the kitchen. Thanks. Yeah, I put the antenna up, and I stripped down the set. Ought to be worth about 40 bucks to put it back together again. <laughs> <laughs> How did you, uh... Nail file. trying to tell me something. Those were in you-know-who's briefcase. <laughs> so? Well, don't you care if he carries pictures of other women? Mother, in the advertising business, other women are merely tools of the trade. Oh, blind faith is unbecoming to you, Samantha. <laughs> don't you understand? I trust Darren. You wouldn't turn a child loose in a candy store, would you? Darren is not a child. Well, he's only human. Isn't that the excuse they always make for themselves? I'm only human. <laughs> they know their limitations better than we do. Well, I don't think of Darren as being merely human. I think of him as being a cut above the ordinary mortal man. How can a witch of mine be so naive? Mother, will you please go away? Very well, very well. I'm leaving. But remember, Samantha, no mortal pulls the wool over a witch's eyes while I'm around. <laughs> Gertrude. If I look a little green, it's pure envy. I break out whenever I see a friend happily married. <laughs> Your turn will come. I know, but when? As soon as you meet the right man. Have any idea where he's hiding? <laughs> I'll bet Darren knows plenty of nice single men. Oh, I don't want to seem too eager, Samantha, but I'm always available. I'll have him invite someone to dinner Friday night. I'm so sorry. Don't worry about it. It's only an inexpensive replica. It can be replaced. It didn't look inexpensive. Looks can be deceiving. Now, Gertrude, are you going to be able to come for dinner Friday night? Sure. But I think you'd be better off inviting Hurricane Hannah. <laughs> Don't be silly. See you Friday night. Thanks. Bye. 
I should have traveled by bus. Are you all right? You know, I think I've been putting on weight. I used to come down through a chimney as clean as a whistle. <laughs> I, I come know. on over here and sit down. Over here. All right. Oh, oh yes. Oh, oh, it's so nice to see you again. Oh, it is nice to see you too, dear. Oh, well, we have a lovely weekend together. A w weekend? Doorknobs are all very well, but they're not family. <laughs> I count them when I'm lonely. But somehow, you know, today they didn't seem to do the trick. And then I remembered the lovely invitation you gave me to come here whenever I wanted to. I see. Now, where's that nice mortal you're married to? Darren went to pick up his parents. They're spending the weekend, too. Oh? Oh, I picked a bad time for a visit. Uh, well, never mind. I'll leave before they arrive. No, you won't. Now, I haven't met Darren's parents. It'd be kind of nice to have you around for moral support. Oh. Besides, we have plenty of room. Now, are you sure I won't be in the way? Of course not. And I'd like them to meet my favorite aunt. Oh, oh you are a nice girl. Now, why don't I show you to your room? And you can get cleaned up and rest before you have to meet Darren and his parents. No, oh, I, I think I'll wait for my bag and umbrella. They weren't ready and packed when I wanted to go, so I just left them there. <laughs> Teach them a lesson. <laughs> Darren? I'm right here, sweetheart. Oh, hi there. I'll be dressed in a minute. Good. We're due at the orphanage in half an hour. Did you get the tree? Oh, yes, yes, I got it. How much was it? Eighteen dollars. Mm -hmm. And they wanted five dollars extra delivery charge. Must be pretty big. Yes, it was pretty big, all right, but I got it home. Good, honey. I'll be down in a few minutes to take it out of the car. Oh, no, no, Darren. Don't bother. I can manage. dollars delivery charge. <laughs> <laughs> Why pull a dirty trick like this on an innocent young bride like her, huh? Because only an innocent young bride like her would fall for a dirty trick like this. <laughs> Besides, it's for a worthy project, isn't it? You don't have to sell the hospital relief fund to us. Don't forget, we're the ones who stuck you with the entertainment chairman last year. <laughs> <laughs> well, believe me, it was a lot tougher hiring professional talent with the kind of budget I had. This year, the committee has set aside $50. <laughs> oh, uh, Samantha, over here. Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, but on the way across town, I saw the cutest hat. Oh, that's all right. We haven't ordered yet. <laughs> what hat? Oh, it didn't do a thing for me. But don't you love the purse and shoes that went with it? <laughs> You're the best dressed chairman our hospital fund ever had. Me? Chairman? Congratulations. Oh, you'll do a great job. <laughs> Thank you. It's a great honor. I'll do my best. Uh, waiter? Garçon? Somebody. Why do we eat here? You can never get a waiter. <laughs> did you see that? I certainly did. It was almost like magic. <laughs> Sam. Huh? 
I think I forgot to lock the back door. I'll do it. No, I'll do it. No, no, sweetheart, you're too tired. Well, so are you. I'll do it from here. <laughs> no, no. Never mind. No hocus pocus. I'll do it. All right, darling. I sprained my ankle. Oh, honey, I'm sorry. Don't apologize. It's not your fault. It is my fault. I just remembered. I already locked the back door. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, very funny. <laughs> it's really easy if you know how. What's the matter? What happened to your head? I gave myself a permanent. On purpose? Yes. Oh, I thought perhaps your finger got stuck in a light socket. <laughs> uh, did I hear you say that you were going out with, uh, what's his name tonight? It's our seventh anniversary. Really, Samantha? You haven't been carrying on this charade for seven years. <laughs> seven months, Mother. Just seems like seven years. <laughs> you won't give up, will you? Not until you do. Oh, he does. Well, don't hold your breath. Darren loves me. Uh, Samantha, you're living in a fool's paradise. Sooner or later, that perfect husband of yours is going to Rome. And I don't mean Italy. It doesn't have to be that way. Oh, yes, it does. Why? Because he's mortal. <laughs> uh, I spoke to your folks yesterday. Yeah? Is your pop any more used to being retired? Well, your mother's still having trouble slowing him down. Last week, he repapered the den, reshingled the roof, wrote nine letters to the editor, and washed the dog three times. <laughs> Sounds like he's overdoing it. Yes, well, that's what she thinks. Poor thing's gone bald in three places. Huh? The dog, I mean. <laughs> I wonder if it was such a good idea they're moving into the city and buying a house. Well, they sounded kind of lonely, so I asked them over to a little dinner party tonight. Well, good. Thank you, sweetheart. I'll see you tonight. Okay. Oh, is anybody else coming? Just mother. <laughs> mother? Well, Connie, my folks are just plain, ordinary, conventional people, while your mother... <laughs> well, let's face it, your mother's a witch. So is Aunt Clara. And they loved her. But they didn't believe she was a witch. They thought she was just an eccentric old lady. Now, if your mother does one of her vanishing acts through the wall, they're liable to keel over in a dead faint. Oh, <laughs> darling, she won't do anything like that. She promised to be charming. I've seen some of her charms. Bang, you're a frog. Darling, there's nothing to be nervous about. Then why am I nervous? <laughs> Morning, sweetheart. Hi, love. Just toast today. I got another rough one. Things are really jumping down at the office. Has the mail come yet? No, I haven't. Yes, it's here. Mother. Did you say something, honey? No, no, sweetheart, just mumbling. <laughs> Darren! Mm -hmm. My cousin Mario's getting married. He's living in Egypt. It's going to be a big wedding. That's nice. His fiance wants me to be matron of honor. Matron of honor at a wedding in Egypt? <laughs> <laughs> the weather in Cairo is marvelous this time of year. I might have known. Samantha, 
Mario's fiancée is simply beautiful. Socially prominent. One of us, of course. Wonderful. Will you be sure to give him our best because Samantha won't be there? That is ridiculous. Of course she will. No, Mother. Darren can't get away right now, and I'm not going anywhere without him. You can't mean that. Well, she certainly can and does. If she goes anywhere at all, it'll be with me the old-fashioned way. You really mean to set yourself against me? Well, I prefer to call it um, exercising my prerogative as a husband. I'll send a note of regret this afternoon. That won't be necessary. I'll take the message myself. <laughs> oh, yes. Speaking of messages, I have one for you, young man. Yeah. You're in trouble. <laughs> oh, well. Hello there. Where'd you come from? You hungry? I don't think so. Oh, hello, Miss Kravitz. Looking for your cat? No, my bird. <laughs> oh, my son. Stars. Well, you don't mean... Well, I put Tweety out for her sun bath, and I heard this meowing, and when I went out, the cage was empty. <laughs> there she is. Where? There, don't you see? No, I don't see. Where? <laughs> oh, there you are, Tweety. Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. Oh, Tweety, don't you ever worry your mommy like that again. <laughs> oh, you saw Tweety way up there on the roof. You must have wonderful eyes. Thank you. I'm glad Tweety's back. Oh, so am I. Oh, Tweety. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. This table is one of our most treasured 17th century pieces. A steal and only $450. Yes. It would be a steal, wouldn't it? <laughs> Are you sure it isn't 18th century, Mr. Bodkin? Well, perhaps early 18th century. <laughs> Excuse me, please. Certainly. Uh, perhaps something like this rocker uh, might interest you? Mm, it is very quaint. It is. It's Flemish. Pennsylvania Dutch. <laughs> we were quite thrilled when we discovered this in the attic of an old cottage in Belgium. Philadelphia. Madam. If you please. <laughs> Excuse me. You know, you know, Samantha, they don't make these things like they used to. I must say, coming to these places is quite stimulating. They hold such happy <laughs> memories. I remember the time your father and I were in Istanbul, and you... Samantha, are you listening to me? Yes, of course, Mother. Well, you share in these memories, too, you know. I know. But now I am more interested in the present and the future with Darren. I won't have you ignore your heritage. I'm not ignoring it. I'm merely putting it in its proper place. I am your mother, and I shall decide its proper place. Now, you have to understand, now that I'm married, things cannot be the way they were with us. So it's come to that. You forsake your mother for a mere mortal. <laughs> mother, we've been all over that. Mr. Kravitz. Oh, good, good morning. Uh, uh, is it afternoon already? Why, yes. Huh. 
I've been standing here all morning waiting to cross. <laughs> You're exaggerating. Well, a little, not much. Hi, Dave. Hello, Samantha. Oh, hello, Counselor. Hello, Mr. Kravitz. How's the most beautiful woman in Morning Glory Circle? Tell me something, Dave. Do the girls really fall for that line? Usually. How's that lucky <laughs> husband of yours? Very busy. I am, too. But I won't be for long if I keep our most important clients waiting. Well, now, wait a minute. You're not going to try and cross now. You don't think a fast man like me is going to be stopped by a few slow cars, do you? <laughs> It's a miracle I wasn't killed. We have been asking for a stoplight on this corner for months. Why haven't we gotten one? Well, that's not up to me, lady. That's up to City Hall. Go fight City Hall. Well, I think we should. I do, too, and soon. Why don't we have a meeting at my house tonight and discuss it? Fine. What time? 8 o'clock. We'll be there. We? Oui. You do want Darren, too, don't you? Only if you insist. <laughs> I insist. I'll be there, too, with Mrs. Kravitz. Only if you insist. Where are you off to in such a hurry? Shopping. It's Dollar Day. Is that good? <laughs> Marvelous. Everything's on sale. You can pick up some terrific bargains. Aha! I suspected David wasn't doing so well. Darren. And he's doing just fine. Bargain hunting's a challenge. It's fun. It's a great pleasure for mortal women. Poor dears. <laughs> if you're not doing anything, why don't you come along? We can have lunch. Well, it might be interesting to see how the other half amuse themselves. You like it? Very nice. This, darling, is what I call a real bargain. Costs nothing. Try it my way, Mother. It's the challenge of the thing. You'll see. <laughs> I can't stop now, honey. I'm late. But, sweetheart... Martin's is due at 9 o'clock, and right after that, I got the Phillips meeting. But, Darren... Friday's always a frantic day. It isn't Friday. <laughs> it's Saturday. You can sleep as late as you like. Oh, boy. I must have said it by mistake. for strike three, and they're two away here in the sixth inning as the bags remain loaded with red legs. I'm ready. Ready for what? Well, for his driving lesson. Honey, the socks are loaded in the bottom of the sixth inning. <laughs> but I thought you were so anxious. Shh. <laughs> yes, he's bringing in the left-hander. It's going to be the old... Okay, you can talk now. Thank you. Coming on to face the left back. I thought you were so anxious to teach me. I am. I mean, I was until I found out they were going to televise the game. I'd be perfectly willing to forget the whole thing. After all, why should I learn how to drive when I already know how to fly? Well, right, we've been through all this. You should learn to drive because the way you fly is for the birds. Look at it this way. I get where I want to go faster, I save money on gas and oil, and I always find a parking space. You should learn how to drive because the normal wife uses normal transportation. It's part of the American dream. All right. All right, you win. But teach me now so I can start dinner early. I'll teach you as soon as the game is over. 
Watching baseball on Sunday afternoon is part of the American dream, too. Okay, fans, we're set for more live action here at Cincinnati's historic Crosley Field. And now the crafty left-hander gets the sign. And then... I can't believe it. It's raining. Guys, <laughs> it's pouring down in the proverbial buckets. Oh, look at this. I can't believe it. Look at that massive... They'll cancel and reschedule. <laughs> okay, I'll teach you how to drive. Yes, sir. <laughs> Well, Mary and I have been discussing it, and we've decided we won't be able to go to Miami to the conclave. We just don't feel right about going off and leaving your poor Aunt Clara by herself. Doesn't she want to go along? Oh, of course she does. But she won't. She's no longer able to fly that far. Oh, no, poor dear. And she's too proud to take a plane. <laughs> well, well, you know, she gets all mixed up in her spells. And then when anyone tries to help her, she gets so depressed. Where is she now? Well, she should be here. I offered to bring her, but she insisted on flying by herself. What can I do to help? Let her stay with you until we get back from Florida. You seem to be doing so well without witchcraft. Maybe you could show Clara how to manage. Well, of course she can stay with us. And we'll help her in any way we can. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Oh, that must be Clara now. Don't you worry about a thing. I'll talk to her. It would be better if I weren't here. Uh, she gets terribly self-conscious in front of me. Well, you run along. And don't worry. All right. Goodbye, dear. I'll just go out this way. Aunt Clara? Aunt Clara? Aunt Clara? Aunt Clara? Goodness, it's you. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, I've lost my doll now. No, you haven't, sweetheart. They're all over the floor. Just oh. don't. Oh. Oh. Just, oh. How did you get in the closet? Oh, I don't know. Just, I don't know. Oh. I just, don't go away. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. Well, at least I'm in the right house. Huh? <laughs> by Magic Door Company is the only automatic door manufactured that can be opened as far as a mile away. And as you approach your garage, you merely press the button in your car, like so, and presto, the garage door is open. Presto, the garage door is closed. How do you like that for magic? Not bad. <laughs> I have some brochures here. That explain everything, but you'd like to take one home with you. Oh. <laughs> Abner, Samantha Stevens. Hmm? Sign the door is out of order. Not for Samantha Stevens, it isn't. How is that, Abner? Tell me, please explain it to me. I'll explain it to you. You're out of order. <laughs> Try switching them around. Uh, huh? Huh. Uh, a little further to the left now. Sam, I've got to go to work. Of all the time to hang pictures. It'll only take a minute. We've been putting it off. We have to get it done sometime. Move the left one. Up, 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 Darren, up, up, Darren. Do I get a biscuit? <laughs> that looks terrible. Nothing works. I do, and I have to be there at 9 o'clock. It's that train. Well, when are we going to do this? When I get home tonight. That's what you always say. I'm tired of looking at a blank wall. Oh, don't worry. You'll think of something. Oh, sure. <laughs> Oh, there's always one thing we can do. What? Move. <laughs> I'll see you tonight. Good morning, 
Miss Kravitz. Good morning. Is Mrs. Stevens at home? I'd like to return this. Uh, yes, yeah, she's inside arranging some pictures. Maybe you can help her. Oh, I'd be glad to. I'm very good at that. I'm glad somebody is. <laughs> See you later. to officially begin our fun filled Sunday. Like, say, 11? Like, say, 11, it is. Let's sleep late, huh, sweetheart? And in the afternoon, we can do any crazy, wonderful thing we happen to think of. <laughs> Roger. Over and out. Darren, <laughs> promise me, Eagle Scout's honor, you won't change your mind and wish you'd played golf with the boys tomorrow. Promise. Scout's honor. <laughs> Lovely morning. Oh, uh, lovely. <laughs> Lock myself out. It happens to me all the time. I'm afraid it was my fault. Uh, uh, your fault? Mm-hmm. I distracted you and I said it was a lovely morning. Remember? Mr. Darren Stevens, isn't it? Oh, yes. I'm Pleasure O'Reilly's baby sister. Oh, son of a gun. I'm holding down the fort while she's on her honeymoon. Oh, welcome to Morning Glory Circle, Miss, uh, D.D. O'Reilly. The first D stands for Dora. Naturally, too, Cube D uses my professional modeling name, so I added an extra big D. And that stands for? Danger. <laughs> well, nice to meet you, uh, Danger. It's nice to meet you, Darren. We seem to have a lot in common, don't we? Uh, how's that? <laughs> We're both early risers. Oh, that, uh, yes. <laughs> I hate to wake Sam now, uh, my wife, but, but... Oh, then don't. I have coffee on, so that's no problem. By the way, how do you like it? <laughs> Your coffee. On uh, the other hand, maybe I had better wake her. <laughs> Let her get her beauty sleep. Now you have a choice. Strawberry waffles or blueberry pancakes? Blueberry pancakes? You're kidding. That's my favorite breakfast. How about that? It's a small world, isn't it? Yeah. Good. <laughs> On your way out, if you want to make sure you have a good time, stop. Go to the nearest mirror and take a good look at yourself. Are you really attractive? <laughs> I mean, as attractive as you can be? We don't think so. Maybe it's your hair. Yes, hair. Ever wanted to see yourself as a flaming redhead? We think you can be a knockout. We can be anything you want to be. And remember, if you don't like the result, you can easily rip it out. Use our brand of magic. Even your neighbors won't recognize you. Perhaps you'd be happier as a brunette. We guarantee you can knock out in any color with tortoise and hair. H-A-R-E color preparations. It's the old story of the tortoise and the hair. Hello, Mrs. Stevens. I ran out of sugar and I wondered if. Ooh! Ooh! <laughs> Something the matter? Your hair changed color. <laughs> it's a wig. Well, you sure got it on fast. What happened to the mirror that was hanging there? What mirror? 
Well, I was sure I saw a mirror and you were looking at... <laughs> Mrs. Kravitz, why don't we go into the kitchen? I'll get you your sugar. Does your husband like your hair like that? Well, he hasn't seen it yet. I want it to be a surprise. He doesn't like you as a blonde? Oh, well, it isn't that. I think that every man likes a little variety in his daily life, don't you? Besides, it's easy to become bored with the same old face. You may be right. Come to think of it, Abner hasn't been his old self lately. You sure one cup's gonna be enough? He doesn't even kiss me goodnight anymore. Last night, he just shook my hand. <laughs> well, uh, some people have different ways of showing affection. It wasn't even a friendly handshake. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, now you can open. Oh, <gasps> champagne. What's the occasion? The occasion is our first quiet evening at home in two weeks. I intend to toast you in blank verse and whisper sweet nothings till sunrise. <laughs> Aren't you sweet? First, we remove the protective wiring. Then we pry loose the cork with the resounding... Chime. <laughs> Who dares intrude on blank verse and sweet nothings? I don't know. But we're going to get rid of whoever it is in a hurry. Oh, Mr. Kravitz. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Stevens, Mr. Stevens. Good evening, Mr. Kravitz. I dropped by to give you some neighborhood gossip. Uh, well, could you tell us tomorrow, Mr. Kravitz? Uh, it's late, and we were... Mrs. Kravitz and I just split up. Oh, no. We had a championship fight. Round one began with a dispute over which draw I should keep my socks in. And round 10 ended with me storming out of the house to go to my club. Uh, why don't you go to your club? I was so mad I didn't realize I don't have one. <laughs> Until I was out the door, which Mrs. Kravitz childishly locked behind me. And when I rang the bell, she didn't open it. She probably didn't hear you, Mr. Kravitz. Why don't you go back and... I rang 20 minutes nonstop. I said, Gladys, let me in. I'll catch pneumonia. And she didn't answer? She answered. She gave me the name of a good doctor. <laughs> Would you care to plead with her on the phone? No, I refuse to stoop to her level of immaturity. I'll sleep in the gutter. Comes morning, she'll find her sole source of support frozen, dead. You'll do no such thing. You'll stay in our guest room. And come morning, when tempers have subsided, you and Mrs. Kravitz will make up. You're both very kind. Tough luck, Gladys. I'm going to live. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Would you care to join us in a glass of champagne? Thanks, but not at bedtime. Oh, all right, Mr. Kravitz. The guest room is the first door to the left on the top of the stairs. At bedtime, I drink piping hot cocoa. It's not too much trouble. <laughs> oh, no. No trouble at all. Now, <laughs> uh, hurry back, honey, before the champagne gets cold. <laughs> Coming, darling. <laughs> Darren? Hmm? Better hurry up and change, sweetheart. We haven't got much time. Changed? What for? We're having dinner at the club, remember? Oh, I forgot completely. Would you rather not go? Oh, no, honey. I'll be fine. Just let me... Let me rest here for a few minutes. Darren, maybe you'd like a cup of coffee. Or perhaps you'd prefer a drink. <laughs> Darren? Oh, lovely looking couple, except for him. <laughs> Does his mouth always gape open like that? Only when he's sleeping. Oh, Samantha, I don't understand you at all. I mean, if you had to marry a mortal, at least you could have chosen a better-looking specimen. I like the way he looks. Besides, I didn't marry Darren just for his looks. What else? His vivacious personality? No one sparkles when they're asleep. Anyway, I think he's quite handsome. You're joking. He's got very good features. Name one. Well, has a nice firm jaw. You like lantern jaws? <laughs> He's got a nice mouth. Slack is a better word. <laughs> How about his eyes? Beady. 
But don't despair, dear. He could be fixed up. Fixed up? Yes, it's all very simple. Now, take that dank, straight hair. All it needs is, uh, well, I'll show you. <laughs> Ew, I don't like that at all. I haven't finished yet. He needs coordinating. <laughs> now, if we just straightened out his nose. Mother, you've gone far enough. Oh, don't be stuffy, Samantha. <laughs> You don't mind with a moustache. Oh, no, that wouldn't be right at all. Just a little one. Wait, let me show you. <laughs> How do you like it? On him, it looks good. <laughs> His hair's too curly. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the coffee. Now, don't you do anything till I get back. Oh, Mother, will you answer that? I sound happy. My husband just told me he loves me. <laughs> oh, you won't be able to have the rally at your house tonight? Well, of course we can have it here. No, no, Darren won't mind. He likes me to do things like that, very civic-minded. He just told me he was proud of me. No, no, no trouble at all. Bye. <laughs> What about the library? Oh, please, would you take a seat, please? Pardon me. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so glad you could come. It is my privilege to introduce to you the man who will soon be the next councilman from Morning Glory Circle, Mr. Ed Wright. Thanks for your warm reception, and to you, Mrs. Stevens, for the use of your home on such short notice. I appreciate your taking time out of your busy lives to come here tonight so we could talk about my campaign. We are all familiar with the record of John C. Cavanaugh, and I don't think it's necessary to warn you as citizens of this community as to the consequences of being this man in office for another term. We have been handled and maneuvered to suit the purposes of the present administration, and I think it's about time we stop it. People who have been unaware of Hi. or complacent about the law's power. Is that exciting? I was going to call you. Call me about what? What are all those people doing here? Shh. They should be made to know how much. Darren, you're going to be awfully proud of me. Are you sure? You want me to take an active interest in the community and be interested in civic affairs? Yes, honey, but all those well, people... Well, there's a lot going on in this town that you don't know about. There's a lot going on in this house I don't know about. <laughs> Well, Shirley Foster was going to have the Ed Wright for Councilman meeting at her place, but at the last minute she couldn't, so I said we could have it here. Darren, he's wonderful, and you should hear him speak. He's a Korean War veteran, a graduate lawyer, and he's very bright. So really, Darren, I know he'll be wonderful for Morning Glory Circle. That's why I knew you'd be proud of me. Well, well hold it, honey, hold it. Why couldn't Shirley Foster have the meeting at her house? Well, her husband works hard at the office all day, and when he comes home, he doesn't like a lot of people around. <laughs> Samantha, what did you say the name of this establishment is? Mario's. Mario's? Hmm? I'm amazed. This is the best Italian food I've had this century. It is good. Mm. 
Just taste this veal marsala. Only on the condition that you taste the fettuccine. It's a deal. <laughs> mm, delicious. <clears throat> Superb. Ladies, excuse me. I, I would like to know, everything is satisfactory? It certainly is. Please pay our compliments to the chef. Thank you. You're the chef? Well, I am Mario's chef, Mario's waiter, Mario's cashier, Mario's everything. Uh, to make a long story short, I'm Mario. Why you not you have hired help? Signor, you see, business is so terrible, I am the only one I can afford. What do you mean with such superb food at such reasonable prices? I will put it in one word. Hmm? Pizza. Pizza? Say, pizza. You see, uh, oh, excuse me. In the confusion of this atomic age, people who are not Italian and they want to order Italian food, you know, they, they don't order veal scalopini, eh, fettuccine alla bolognese. No, they want pizza. But it isn't even on your menu. And it's not going to be. Oh, no. You see, I belong to a family of men who have been artists in the kitchen for five generations. And I modestly belong to this glorious tradition. So I refuse. I refuse to slap it in the face with the pizza. Now, this makes sense, no? Absolutely. It makes no difference, because my restaurant is going to fail. My wife and children are going to starve. And today's dessert is San Bayone. <laughs> I don't ordinarily feel sorry for human beings, but I do feel sorry for him. So do I. I think I'll ask Darren to help. How? Washing dishes. Videos <laughs> isn't a success because the public doesn't know about it. Advertising is Darren's business. Informing the public is Darren's stock in trade. Hardly. His stock in trade is contributing to the delinquency of my daughter. <laughs> what? You're a tough woman. You're a great witch, but you're a tough woman. <laughs> sound and I woke up. You sneezed. It's ridiculous. I never sneeze in my sleep. It wakes me up. What time is it? A little after three. Did you set it for seven? Yes, it's all set. Now you better cover up and go back to sleep. Oh, I gotta have a clear head tomorrow. I gotta. I've got some day. Can I get you anything? Stars, Cousin Edgar. <laughs> 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 